Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be covering a very exciting topic, which is storybook add-ons. Now, add-ons are, as you might have guessed, add-ons to Storybook, which sort of extend the functionality that Storybook provides out of the box. Now, Storybook is great for writing our components and grouping them and organizing them within our system. But sometimes you want to add a bit of functionality to the pattern library itself, which will allow for stakeholders on the project to interact with the project and components. So we're going to be covering a couple of cool add-ons. One of them is docs, and then we're going to be covering our storybook knobs, which are input controls which modify the prop values being passed into a component. And then finally, we're going to look at storybook designs, which will allow us to embed or wrap our components with a Figma design on a sidebar, which will allow us to compare our final implementation against the original designs of the components. Now, a lot of these add-ons work well with Storybook, but sometimes they will have a sort of incompatibility issue with one another. So be careful when including several add-ons, as some of them may disable other add-ons. The design add-on specifically seems to be removing some of the input controls from Storybook knobs. So we'll be using them in isolation, but I'll be showing you how to set up each sort of add-on as we go along. So, so far we have quite a complex button component. We have the basic button, second button, tertiary button, icon button, function button, and linked button. And although the component is quite complex, we don't have that much documentation around the component itself, just the different variations of the component and how they can be used. So to include some more documentation and to show some more examples of how the button works, we're going to make use of the add-ons. So we're going to head over to Storybook add-ons, and I'll leave a link to the page in the description of this video. But this page is great for getting up and running with Storybook add-ons if you've not used any of them before, um, going over the basics up to how you can use advanced configuration. But in this video, we're going to focus primarily on add-on knobs to start off with before following on with docs and then designs. So we've already got um, Storybook add-ons and actions and yeah, just those two installed already, but we're going to go ahead and copy all three of the top ones. We won't make use of notes. We're going to make use of docs. So just use the first three packages and install them to your Storybook project. So while that's kicking off, we'll go ahead and head back over to the page. And you can see that to register the add-ons, we have to add them into an add-ons.js file. Now we've already got this file from the default installation of Storybook, and we already have actions registered, but we don't have knobs registered. So we'll head back over and we will head over to our add-ons.js. And just under actions, we'll add in knobs. And then we can scroll down and it goes over how using different orders um, in your configuration for your add-on.js file will depend on what tab order they are in your pattern library. Now we can skip over the rest of this documentation because this kind of focuses more on the actions add-on. And instead we're gonna head over to the add-on knobs page, which is on the npmjs.com website. Now it kind of goes over how to install the add-on, but we've already done that. So instead, we're going to go ahead and get started with using it in the context of our stories. So I'll copy the import statement from this example, and we will head over to our button stories. And just above our button import, we'll add in with knobs, text, boolean, and number. We can actually get rid of, we'll get rid of those two for now and just focus on the text. And We'll also need to include the decorator in our export just so that knobs gets registered in our story. And then we're going to go ahead and run npm run storybook again. <clears throat> and so what we're doing is we're saying with knobs is an add-on we want to use within this story. And we're including it as a decorator, which means it will show in the side panel of our story. And then we're also importing the text function, which I'll be going over in a moment with our basic button to show how we can create an input field control for our story. So if everything went well, 
you should see that there's a knobs panel on the right hand side or at the bottom of your storybook environment. And if we click on it, we'll see that there are no knobs found for this story at the moment with a link to include documentation uh, to the documentation on how to add in your own stories with knobs. Now we're going to be focusing on the text function in this example. So to use a text function, we'll have to pass in three arguments. One is the label of the input field. So in this case, we'll include it as text or button text. And then we'll have a default value, which would be in this case, basic button. And then third, you have a group value, which is a value used to group multiple input fields. So if we had a text input and a number input, we might want to group them separately. And by using the third parameter, you can do so. As we've only got one input, it doesn't matter too much in this case. So we'll wrap this with text. And as you can see, there's name, value, and then group ID, which is optional. So we'll call this button text and then basic button as a default. And then we'll skip over the third and final parameter as we don't need it in this example. So now when we head back over to Storybook, we have this basic button input text uh, field with the label button text. And now what we can do is we can dynamically change the props being passed in to our button. So if we said, hello world, you can see that we immediately updated the prop value of children in our button and we have hello world being returned to us. Now that's a really basic example of how you can use knobs. Another example would be in our icon. So I want to swap out the icon based on a prop and we already set up the functionality based with the icon prop. And we're going to go ahead and import the select function. So the select function is a bit more complicated than the text function. It um, requires four values. And if we scroll down or search for select in the documentation, you can see here is a good example showing that we can pass in a label, a set of options, default value, and then group ID. And so if I create this configuration just above, what we want to do is we want to go into our button and we want to use these five values. So if I go ahead and get rid of those, Oop. and then we'll give it a label icon and the default value will be bag. And we'll give this a group idea of icon or actually, Let's call it images. And then we'll bring this select function and pass it in as a prop to icon button. And give that a save. And now what we should see is we have this select input. And now we can swap out the different icons for our button component with the icon prop value. And we could even bring in our text function and put it in icon button and change the default value to icon button. And now we have two tabs, one's for images and one doesn't have a group ID yet. And we can change this to um, view cart. And then we could change the image to a shopping cart. And now we have a you know, unique example of how this button can be used in a different context. So those are just two functions from the Storybook knobs add-on. And I invite you to have a play around and have a look around at the other values you have available to your story too. I like to group my add-on knobs values in a JSON file. So button.knobs.json. And then I would go ahead and grab these values and we could create an object. So icon and we'll have label icon options. Default. Cool. 
So now we have uh, an object with different values we can um, tap into. And in our button, we can do import knob data from button knobs.json and then destructure those. So const um, icon equals knob data. And then in our select, we can do icon.label, icon.options, icon.default, and then icon.group. Yeah. Cool. So now it just keeps the button a bit more focused on the button component itself and not too much on the knobs. And so if we refresh this, it should work exactly as before except now we have the values in a JSON file, which means we have a bit more um, separation of the story being written and the knob data itself. So with knobs complete, we're going to move on to the next Storybook add-on, which is Docs. Now, Docs allows us to write sort of in-depth documentation around the component and the different use cases for the component in the context of your application or product. So if we scroll down to the installation process, we can go ahead and copy the at storybook add-on docs package. And we're going to stop storybook and run npm i and then the name of the add-on. And we'll want to register this as well. So we'll import storybook add-on docs and register. And we can go ahead and import some other packages which will allow us to process MDX in our Storybook application. And finally, we need to add this following code snippet to our main.js file, which we don't currently have. So we can go ahead and create that in our .storybook directory. And then modify the code snippet to be looking in the components directory as opposed to source as that is where our button is. And it's looking for either JS files or MDX, and it's using the docs add-on to process those. So if we go back, we have some more configuration we can include for if we're using the story shots add-on and jest. And then um, there are some configuration options that we can modify if we wanted to include some other options as we are using JSX, we should probably just include this by default just in case. So we'll copy this snippet and paste that in. And you also have the option to manually configure the um, add-on yourself if you wanted to go ahead and do so. And then finally, we need to set up the docs page in a preview file. So we'll create that in our .storybook directory. So we actually need one more file before we get up and running with docs, which is the presets.js file. And I've copied and pasted some configuration from a documentation page that I found on Storybook docs, which is an old preview page, but it had some um, in-depth documentation around how to get up and running. So I'll leave a link in the description for this as well. So now if we stop and start Storybook, we should now see that we get a different Storybook environment um, spinning up. Hopefully we'll get our documentation running. So now if we go over to our docs panel, you can see that we have the button title and a table with the props that we have made available to our component as well as a description of what the prop type will be and if there is a default value. Now you can go ahead and share the component or view it in an iframe on its own in isolation um, and have the same controls you would normally have when viewing an individual um, component. And you also have access to show the code, which at the moment, moment is showing the knobs. So again, as I said, sometimes the different add-ons can have conflicts of interest. So it's not showing, um, well, it is showing the code, but the code is using an add-on, so it doesn't really make much sense in this context. But you can also scroll down and see the other variations without having to click through 
to the different components. Instead, it'll scroll you to it. Um, and yeah, so you, out of the box, we haven't really done that much configuration except for registering the add-on, and we've already got a ton of functionality supported given to us. Um, we can extend this further by creating our own documentation with MDX files, which I won't be covering in this video, but it will allow you to write paragraphs and titles and have a bit more control over the granular information surrounding a component. Um, there are also some examples that I found which um, show how to disable um, docs on a story by story basis. And I'll be leaving a link to all of the information and resources in the description of this video. So the third and final add-on we're going to be exploring in this video is a add-on called Storybook Add-on Designs, which allows us to include PDF or image um, files or even a Figma URL attached to our Storybook components. Now, this is great because it will allow us to compare the original designs of our component with the final front-end implementations. So I'll leave a link again to this add-on in the description of this video. Um, you will need to be using version 5 or above of Storybook, which is fine, as in our case, we're using version 5.2.8. And we'll first off go ahead and install the add on designs package. So npm i, the name of the package, and we'll go ahead and register the package in our add ons.js file. And then we can add it to our story. So we're going to go ahead and undo some of the um, add ons we've already got going on with our storybook um, configuration. We're actually going to remove, um, we'll remove the knobs for now, just so we have a bit more focus. Um, and I'll have to replace all of these with just button text for now. And we'll set that to bag. Cool. And we'll head back over. So we need to import with design from design. I can get rid of the knobs controls for now. Um, add comma. Cool, cool, cool. So we've imported it, we've added it as a decorator, and now we need to add in some object parameters for our story. So we'll attach it only to basic button for now. So we'll do basic button dot story name my awesome story. We'll just call this basic button again. And we're going to be adding in a Figma file. So the original button design was meant to look something like this. Uh, it's obviously not accurate as of recording this video, but in a future video, I might cover how to import custom fonts, um, but it might be out of the scope of this series. So we can go ahead and share this component and copy the design file link and replace it in our parameters and go ahead and save that. So now we have access to our canvas and we have access to our Figma design. So we can go ahead and start developing this in isolation and comparing it to design without having multiple windows open. And because we have hot reloading in Storybook, it just creates a really nice seamless experience when developing front end components. So now that we have our Storybook add ons configured, we can now move on to exploring larger structures in our pattern library, such as a navigation list. So in the next video, you can join me where we'll be building our first molecule, the navigation list.